right, welcome back. Uh, in the third part yeah, of chapter two, uh, we are going to look at the remainder yeah, of the items available in uh, the balance sheet. We have looked at assets yeah, in the previous uh, segment. Now we are going to look at the liabilities and owners' equity. Yeah? All right, then we come, uh, as we mentioned earlier, the format is the liabilities are ordered yeah, or arranged from the most liquid liability to the least liquid liability. Yeah? All right, so we start with the most liquid, which is accounts payable, right? Because it will be paid uh, within one year, yeah? the most liquid. Yeah? Accounts payable refer to what uh, the firm, US Corporation here, owes its suppliers. Yeah? Its suppliers who have provided, yeah? that means the company has purchased material from uh, its suppliers, but they have not paid, yeah? the company has not paid the suppliers. Yeah? Therefore, if you look at the figure here, $266 million was owed by the company to its suppliers at the end of the financial year 2018. Okay, so that's what it means, yeah? Now, the second item here, it's notes payable, yeah? Notes payable are short-term debt, okay, which is obtained from creditors, yeah? With some notes, that's why it's called notes, yeah? And uh, a document, if you like, yeah? A document. It's like a security, but it is not usually not tradable yeah not tradable in the, uh, there is no secondary market to this yeah this no such as uh, proof of uh, indebtedness yeah that means the company owes the creditors yeah all right so these are payables okay but then these are notes payable yeah short term debt so we can see here that uh, this is 123 million dollars at the end of 2018 it means that the company owed Okay, $123 million to its uh, creditors, yeah, uh, in terms of short-term debt. Is that clear? All right, yeah. Then we move on to longer-term debt. And this is long-term debt. Long-term debt, by definition, means that the debt's maturity, yeah, it needs to be repaid uh, after one year, yeah, not within one year, not within the next year, yeah. So this becomes due, this debt becomes due, uh, perhaps in 2020, yeah, not 2019, for example, yeah, because if it's 2019, then this will be short-term debt, yeah. All right, as you can see here, 454 million dollars, yeah, uh, were the long-term debt, yeah, owed by U.S. Corporation to its long-term creditors. Okay, uh, this could be this could mean banks, yeah banks that have lent money to uh, the company, yeah, capital to the company. Okay, then uh, this would be the total liabilities, okay, current liability plus long-term debt would be total liabilities. Then we move on to equity, yeah. Owner's equity is made up of two major components here. Okay, one is called common stock and paid in surplus. This is the term used in the U.S., but the more common term that you see in Malaysia is that we call this ordinary shares here, ordinary shares rather than common stock. And we call this uh, premium, yeah, share premium. We call this share premium, ordinary shares and share premium. Okay, so uh, in common or in very broad terms, this means par value of the stock or the share plus additional paid-in capital. Yeah? Sometimes they call this paid-in capital, additional paid-in capital. Okay, so it means that roughly, okay, if you look at this figure here, $640 million was the amount that was issued in terms of shares, okay, by the company to the shareholders, yeah, at various points in time. Yeah? This was the amount outstanding, uh, or that was the value, yeah, uh, uh, at uh, at the end of year 2018, yeah, 640 million. Okay, so this means uh, in that year or the year before, okay, 640 million dollars uh, worth of shares were issued, yeah, or sold to the 
owners, yeah, or shareholders. Okay, so this is what it means. Yeah. <coughs> then we have another major item under owners equity, which is retained earnings. Yeah, it is simply given as retained earnings. Uh, retained earnings can appear in two places. Yeah, one is in the balance sheet here, balance sheet, but it can also appear in income statement. Yeah, but they mean two different things. Yeah, they are related, but they mean different things. Yeah. Uh, to differentiate this, in Malaysia we call this uh, accumulated retained earnings, yeah, or cumulative retained earnings, yeah, depending on the term used. Okay, this means cumulative, yeah, or it is accumulated over the years, yeah, retained earnings. Okay, in the income statement we have another item, a related item, which is called retained earnings for the year, yeah. Okay, that is the retained earnings for that particular financial year. Okay, so these are two different things. So this is cumulative over, uh, over time, yeah, since the inception of the company until now, or inception of the business from the start of the business until this point, 2018, for example, here, yeah, that is cumulative retained earnings. Yeah, in the balance sheet, it's always cumulative. Yeah, so it means here roughly 1.7 billion. Yeah, or one. 1,690,000, yeah, sorry, million, yeah, this is 1,690 million, okay, dollars, okay, roughly 1.7 billion dollars of uh, earnings, yeah, were retained uh, during 2018 and also before 2018, yeah, during and before 2018, yeah. Now, notice this retained earnings is actually owned by the owners, yeah, these are the rights, yeah, the, uh, it's rightfully owned by the owners or shareholders of the company, okay. Uh, retained earnings are earnings that the company has not paid out as dividend to the shareholders, yeah, these are rights of the shareholders, yeah, these are the shareholders' uh, earnings actually, yeah. But this has not been paid out as uh, dividends. Therefore, these are retained yeah, to uh, uh, to sustain the business or to expand the business yeah, or the company. Therefore, it has not been paid out. Yeah? Therefore, this is actually reinvested by the owners. That is why it appears in owner's equity. All right. When you add all this, okay, this is the total current liabilities. When you add with long-term debt, that is total liability, when you add these two, then you add with the total equity, yeah, owner's equity. Then you would get uh, this total liabilities and owner's equity, which must be equal to total assets. Yeah. So this equation is very crucial. Yeah. Assets, yeah, total assets must always be equal to total liabilities plus equity. All right, because the purchase of these assets must be funded by the funds provided by either. Uh, or total, yeah, would be uh, liquidity. <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. It will be provided by uh, both, yeah, uh, liabilities. Okay, this liabilities, these two liabilities, and also by the owners, yeah, which is called equity. Is that okay? <coughs> excuse me. All right. Let me just stop video for a while. All right, yeah, with that, we have finished uh, the various items yeah, in a balance sheet. Of course, there are other uh, minor items which are not shown here. Uh, in a real balance sheet, you would, you would find other smaller items. Yeah? This, but these are the more popular, widely used items. Okay, and students need to be familiar with what these items mean. Yeah? All right, uh, let's go to the next slide. Okay, we are still in the first key point. Yeah? We have not finished the first key point. Yeah? We are already in the third uh, segment. But we have, uh, third segment meaning third clip yeah, of the video. But we are still covering the first key point yeah? or the first key concept which is the balance sheet. Alright, now the balance sheet provides the book value of the assets, liabilities and equity. Yeah? Note this, we introduced this term book value. Alright. Now, this is the book value. What does book value mean? Book value means historical price or cost yeah, of the assets, liabilities or equity when that asset, liability or equity was acquired. Okay, so this is historical. Yeah? This can be uh, the recent past to the very distant 
past. Okay, so this this is what we mean by historical, yeah? Book value. Book value means historical. Okay, now market value, on the other hand, is the price at which the assets, liabilities, or equity can actually be bought or sold, usually now. Okay, this is now. Yeah? So market value is actually current value. But book value is actually historical value. Okay, so that's the difference between the two. Yeah? Now, market value and book value are often different. Why? Because book value is based on what was the cost or price of a particular item, whether it's an asset, liability, or equity, at a different time from now. Yeah? So the time is different. Yeah? But market value is the value. Okay? or uh, the price of the asset, liability or equity now, eh? to buy it now or to sell it now, what would be the price that the firm would gain yeah? or would have to pay. Right? If it's an asset, that's the price that the uh, firm would have to pay. If it's a liability, that is the price that the firm would have to uh, receive yeah? or uh, sell, yeah? the price that we get to pay, yeah, pay the liabilities. Alright, so that is why it's different. Essentially, it's a difference in terms of time, yeah. The value of an asset will change over time. Alright, so which is more important to the decision maker? So that's the question, yeah. Okay, let's go back to the question. What is uh, more important to the decision, make, uh, decision maker and decision making process? Market value or book value? Okay, accountants prefer book value because it's neat, yeah? it is uh, standardized, yeah? the, uh, there is no uh, controversy yeah? and it is, uh, everyone can agree on the book value. Yeah? But market value is uh, the value based on the current yeah? moment now, yeah? current value. Yeah? And there is uh, differences in opinion yeah? about the market value. Okay, we can agree on the concept of market value, but uh, everyone would have a different yeah, uh, value of market value. All right? Therefore, uh, which is more important? Accountants would prefer book value, but finance, yeah, we, we focus on market value because market value is uh, the value now. Yeah? Our decisions, okay, the decision making in finance yeah, would be driven by market value. What is the value that you would get for a particular asset or liability or equity now? Okay, so that's uh, why market value is more important. Yeah, but the problem with balance sheet is that it only gives you book value. Okay, so therefore, book value of uh, the balance sheet is limited. Yeah, it does not completely serve the purpose for finance. Yeah, therefore, we need to look for other means yeah, of making decisions. Okay, where does the book value and market value differ? We have an example here. We have the balance sheet. Okay, you have assets here, liabilities and equity here. It's a simplified balance sheet. Okay, so uh, you have book value and market value for a particular year. Yeah, let's say this is 2018. Okay, for cling on, yeah, a corporation. You have the book value here and the market value here for assets and book value here and the market value here for liabilities. Yeah. We look at the book value here, you have net working capital. Yeah? Net working capital includes current assets minus current liabilities. Yeah? Current liabilities are minus from current assets, you get this value. Then you have net fixed assets, you have 700 here, the book value. Long term debt is 500, okay? No short term debt, remember, no current liabilities, but because current liabilities are minus from current assets here, yeah? therefore it has been included here. So you start with long-term debt, then you have equity, yeah, shareholders equity. So when you add these two, you have 1.1 uh, million, let's say these are in thousands, okay, this is also 1.1 million. But if you look at the market value, you find that networking capital, the market value is slightly higher. These two, yeah, the difference between book value and market value for networking capital is likely to be very small, yeah, the difference, yeah. They are likely to be very closely related. Yeah? The market value now is 600. The book value uh, was 400 or is 400 now. Yeah? Okay. But if you look at long-term debt, you find that the book value and market value is very the same. Yeah? Yeah? But they are likely to be very close. Yeah? 
very very close almost the same 